the 10th of April. This is a, a historical day. A lot of people don't realize that this day was devastating to Indian people. And this is a, a day that America does not want the world to know about. On this day in 1883, the American government made a law that stated that all native languages and ceremonies were now declared illegal. How about that? On a country that was allegedly built on the freedom of religion, it was not allowed for Indians to be free. I think that's just ironic as hell. When you go to school in America, you learn in American history that the reason why British colonists set up in North America and other Europeans set up camp in South America, that the reason why was they came looking for gold in the first place. And they exterminated many nations of indigenous peoples with diseases and outright murder in South America was horrible, and also in North America. When the British came, they obviously knew that they weren't going to find any gold, so they wanted to find another way. How, how else can they make money? And so some of these rich companies in England wanted to grow food in the 13 original colonies. So that's the reason why they came was to grow food and to bring it back and sell it. So it was about money. It was not about freedom or anything like that. That's the real reason. But in American history books, it says they came here because they were persecuted for their religious beliefs. So they wanted to find a land where they could live in freedom. And they came here. That's what the American history books state. And that's not 100% true. The main reason they came to America was to grow crops and then make money from that. That was the main reason. But when America declared independence from England, one of the first things that they did was there were some tea that was supposed to be shipped back to England. So what happened was that some of these colonists, they dressed up as Indians and they dumped all that tea into some area in Boston, Massachusetts, and they called it the Boston Tea Party. And this was a gesture showing England that they were not going to take any more crap from the king. Because the king of England realized that the colonists were making a lot of money. So he wanted some of that money. So what he did was he increased the taxes so high that it angered the colonists. And so, again, it comes down to money. The reason why the colonists declared independence from England was because of money. It had nothing to do with being free because they weren't slaves or anything. They brought slaves from Africa, so the colonists were not the slaves, but they felt, oh, we need to be free, so they're going to declare independence. But they couldn't even do it under their own identity. They had to pretend to be Indians. So they painted themselves red and they put on goofy-looking Native American uh, regalia and they jumped on their own ships and threw all the tea in this water and then they called it the Boston Tea Party. See, they couldn't even do it on their own identity. They had to dress up as Indians. And that's been a tactic that America has used ever since then up until this day and they continue to do this same tactic and that tactic is dressing up as the enemy and then attacking its own people and they do that so they can get the public to hate the enemy 
Or if America needs an enemy, they will create an enemy by pretending to be that enemy and then attack their own people. And then that gets American citizens to hate that group. That's what America's been doing all along. They did that with Indians in the 1800s as well, where American soldiers were dressing up as Indians and attacking white farmers and raping their women, even raping their children. And then they blamed it on the Indians. And all that time, it was American soldiers doing that. And that goes all the way to September 11th, 2001. America does it again. They said they set it up so that it looks like it's Muslim terrorists to blow up the buildings, the Twin Towers. But there was evidence that they didn't count on that was left behind that shows there's no way, no way in hell that could have been done by terrorists. Not Muslim terrorists. It couldn't have been done by them. The only way it could have been done was with people who were very knowledgeable about bringing buildings down. And there is chemical evidence that suggests that something else was used to bring both buildings down. And that was done by American contractors. That was not done by Muslim terrorists. But they made it look like Muslim terrorists did it. See, it's the same tactic that they used against Indians. They dressed up as Indians and attacked American citizens. They attacked their own people under the disguise of Indians. And they made it so that Americans wanted Indians to be exterminated. And so the reason why British colonists set up in America was because they were looking for ways to make money. It had nothing to do with religious freedom. It had nothing to do with that. But like I said, the American history books in elementary schools teach that the reason why the colonists came was because of religious freedom. See, the American history books teach lies right from the beginning. But if it was true, let's just pretend, okay? Let's pretend that, yes, let's say the colonists came because they wanted religious freedom. So America was supposed to be founded upon religious freedom, but on this day, the 10th of April, 1883, America said no religious freedom for Indian people. <laughs> it's crazy, isn't it? So from the 10th of April, 1883, to August 11th, or the 11th of August, 1978, our language and ceremonies were declared illegal. That's 95 years. 95 years Lakota language and Lakota ceremonies were illegal. But some Lakota people still kept it, though. They just did it in secret. And a lot of Lakota people only spoke Lakota in their homes. So they were still able to keep some of this. But once the reservations got established and we were placed on reservations, it got worse. Because we were not allowed to eat healthy foods that our bodies were used to. The reservations in the beginning used to be like prisons. We couldn't leave. We couldn't have guns or any kind of weapons, so we couldn't hunt. The only food we could eat was whatever America gave us, which was very unhealthy food. So we became sick physically, developing diabetes and hypertension and heart diseases. And then, like I said, our language and ceremonies were also illegal, so we were hit emotionally and spiritually. So... In the early days of the reservation, we were attacked physically, emotionally, and spiritually. In the Lakota way, the self is seen as having four parts. The physical, the emotional, the spiritual, and the mental. That's body, mind, heart, and soul. So we were hit in three of those areas at once. 
The remaining part was the mind. And that's how we became weak-minded in the early 1900s. And so we started to believe what the priests were saying in the churches. That's a brainwash that happened. I'm going to talk more about that in a few minutes, okay? I'll give more details on that because it's something that needs to be known. These are things that America does not want the world to know. That America treated Indians incredibly evil. In a very, very evil way. And the world needs to know that. America is not this knight in shining armor defender of the free world. No way. Because it knows what it's doing. It's pretending to do good things. But at the same time, it's doing equally evil things. It's like one hand is, is shaking everybody's hand and the other hand is cutting off other people's hands. And that's America. It's still happening. In the 1800s and the 1900s, it was America against Indians. Now, in the 21st century, it's America against Muslims. America needs an enemy to exist. They need an enemy to exist. That is something called duality. An abuser needs a victim to live, to exist. For an abuser to exist, he needs a victim. And that's how America is. America is an abuser. It needs a victim. And it will present a false image of itself. Just like when you look at an abusive relationship of a man who constantly beats his woman, when they're in public, He's all nice to her. He's just charming and opens the door for her and everything. In public, he presents this really nice image that they're a happy couple. But meanwhile, she's shaking because she knows that as soon as they get home, that's when the beating begins. This is America. America is like this abusive man. So when you have somebody who's trying to oppress you, the way to stop him is to not be a victim. That means it's in your thinking. That's where you start. Because when you stop thinking like a victim, that drives the abuser crazy. And it could stop him, or he might find another victim instead. But they cannot handle it when you do not act like a victim. Because abusers and victims naturally attract each other. That's a natural law defining unhealthiness. I'll talk a little bit more about those things in a few minutes to go more in detail. But I want the world to know that these things happen to Indian people. And I want Indians to know this too, because a lot of Indians don't even know. Today, most Indians have no idea that their language and culture was once declared against the law. They don't know this because of the brainwash that's happened since the early 1900s on reservations against Indian people. I want people to know about this because you need to know the truth of where You've been, so that way you know better where to go. When you are at peace with your past difficulties, then you have a really good idea on where to go next in your life. Back in the late 1800s, when we were placed on reservations, there were prison camps in the beginning. And uh, this is a situation where we couldn't leave. We were not allowed to hunt. Our knives and guns were taken from us. And we were only allowed to eat whatever the American government gave to us, which was really no good food. 
the quality of the food was okay when it left places like Chicago and stuff like that. But once it got to some of these train stations between there and the reservation, a lot of these handlers would sell it. And then they would buy old food and put that in there instead, and these middlemen would make a lot of money. So what we got on a reservation was bullshit food. It was really no good. And we ended up getting all kinds of diseases like uh, heart diseases, hypertension, diabetes, things like that. And then at the same time, our language and ceremonies were declared illegal by the United States. So we were hit physically, spiritually, and emotionally. Soon after that, our minds became weak. These are the four parts of the self. So with the four parts of the self being sick, we lost our connection to our sacred center. So we started to focus on communicating away from that. And then the priests came from the various churches, and they learned our ways and said that since our ways conflict with the Bible, that our ways are evil, that they come from Satan. They come from the devil. So in our weakened states, we slowly began to accept that. Now, another thing is that there were some Lakota people that didn't want to accept that. They wanted to hang on to the traditional Lakota star knowledge ways. And if they revolted, they were sent to a mental hospital in Canton, South Dakota, which was set up for all reluctant Indians in America that did not want to become Christianized. They were sent there. And these church priests also committed the medicine men, medicine women, holy men, holy women. They committed all of them to these mental asylums too. This way, the people would not go to them for help, that they would come to the churches. They wanted the Indian people to only go to the priests and not their traditional healers. So they sent the healers to this mental asylum to die. And if you are radical, you were sent there to die too. So while this is happening, the priests are saying to Indian people, if you believe our way, we will help your children. And so it was a very, very dire straits time. And so a lot of Indians became Christians because of that. Like I said, we were weak-minded too at that point. And those who stuck it out, there were people who refused to accept Christianity, but they went to church anyway. What they were doing was they were putting up a candy store front. On the outside, they were acting like good little Christian Indians, but on the inside, they weren't. They were star knowledge people. They did this because they didn't want to get sent to that mental asylum to die. That's sad, isn't it? But that's part of what happened back then. And it's because of these people who maintained this knowledge in secret. Thanks to them, they passed it down to certain people like me. And we still have this knowledge and I'm sharing it with you because this regards the sacred center and we all have that this is not a Lakota thing this is a Ikche Oyate thing Ikche Oyate means human being when you live this way you communicate as a human not as a Lakota not as a German or a Japanese or an African you communicate as a human. That's really important to know. So, that's how it was back then. Now, remember I said that the, the priest said to the Indians, we will help your children. So, they took the children away from the parents, sent them to boarding school hundreds of miles away, where these children were tortured to speak only English, and learn a civilized Christian way. 
If they spoke about home, they were tortured. These schools didn't do background checks in those days. The pay was really low. So they got really no good teachers in these schools. A lot of these teachers were sadistic. They got sexual pleasure from torturing people. And here, this is like summer holiday camp for them. And the same thing for perverts. A lot of perverts now had their pick of the litter. And they could get away with it. That's what happened. A lot of these children were murdered. They were killed. They were raped. They were molested. And there's a lot of unmarked graves near these schools. Not all of these children are accounted for. So, those who made it through, what they learned was whatever they saw. Because a lot of these children never went back home. They were told by the priests that their families had died and that there was nobody there. And that broke their hearts. This is why some of these children, they were so sad, they couldn't eat. And they ended up starving themselves to death. And those who made it through, like I said, they didn't really survive because they were not able to process all these emotional traumas that they experienced. They didn't know how. Because the only adults that were around them were these unhealthy, abusive people, teachers, dorm matrons, cooks, janitors, priests. They were all unhealthy to them. That's all they knew. They learned how to become victims, and they learned how to become abusers to those who they considered weaker than themselves. So they didn't really survive. A lot of these children that made it through these schools, they had a lot of traumas that they didn't know how to deal with because all they saw was abuse. That's what they learned. There was no adult healthy role models to emulate. Remember I said these children were told that their families were all dead, so they didn't go back during summer holidays. They just stayed at these schools and worked. So when they left these schools, they tried to live in mainstream America. Nobody accepted them. They would say, ah, you're a heathen. You're a dirty Indian. So they couldn't even get jobs off the reservation. And when they went back to the reservation, to their people, they ran into more problems. Many, many times they were not even accepted by their own people because their own people were saying, oh, you're too white. You act like a white man. So they're caught in between. So a lot of them turned to alcohol to try to hide all of it, to try to forget everything. They turned to alcohol and then later drugs. There were some who tried to make it. They married each other because they knew each other went through the same thing. And they didn't want their children to go through what they went through. So they didn't teach them the language. They didn't teach them the culture. Those children, the children of these first generation boarding school people, those children are today's elders. When they were born, they didn't learn the language. They didn't learn Lakota Star knowledge. They never got the opportunity to. When you look at an old person on the reservation today, they're not the connection to the ancient past. No, they were born in a Christian background. At a time when the reservations were strongly Christian. So this is what happened. That's a native experience that a lot of people don't realize. And this is this is what happened all over America and Canada too. So 
the next generation, they are sent to boarding school too. No choice. It's a little bit better, but they're still abused. They're still getting treated really no good. And so they grow up, have children, and they don't teach their children anything. What what can they teach them? They don't know anything concerning their own language. This is why today most people cannot speak their own language. And what little cultural information they know is Christianized, meaning it's dualistic. And it's not the original ancient form. Okay, so the first generation of Indian kids that were sent to boarding school, since all around them were unhealthy adults who did nothing but abuse them, they didn't receive healthy parenting. They missed things that they should have learned about life. So they're lacking emotional development. So when they grow up, and those who make it through these boarding schools, and then they they have children, those children are also lacking that emotional support, that emotional development. Because the parents don't know how to do it. All they knew and all they learned was abuse. All they experienced in these schools was abuse. So they have a hard time trying to be a healthy parent. So they do the best that they can. But the children still are not receiving the proper emotional development, the, the experiences that that healthy children should receive from healthy parents. They're still missing that. And so when that second generation grows up, they know even less concerning healthy parenting. And so their children receive even less. And every time this happens, the next generation becomes more dualistic than the previous one. So let me try to say that again. The first generation boarding school kids, they didn't receive proper parenting skills. So when they have children, their children are not receiving healthy training that they should be receiving. They're receiving even less than their parents. Now that second generation, when they grow up, see, they know even less. So when they have children, those children are <laughs> are receiving even less, and it gets worse with each generation, which also means that the less healthy emotional development they receive, the more dualistic they become. So with each generation is more becoming emotionally underdeveloped, they are also becoming more dualistic. So today, it's a huge mess on the reservation. As a whole, we're incredibly underdeveloped emotionally, and we are incredibly dualistic. We're quick to attack each other. We're quick to pull each other down. We're just like the rest of the civilized, dualistic world. Notice I didn't say white man, because this is all over the world. It's not just among white countries. It's all over the world. Wherever there is a dualistic ideology where one gender is considered less than and property of the other gender you're going to have incredibly underdeveloped emotional people which equals incredibly dualistic people and that is unhealthy so that started by the time of the late 1800s on the reservation. Anywho, yes, we were talking about how in America it was against the law to be Native American. From the 10th of April 
1883 to the 11th of August 1978. It's crazy, isn't that? Yeah, that for 95 years, our language and spirituality was illegal. Jeez. I also said a lot of things about how people changed on the reservation and how today most Native people are very, very Christian influenced. And it's just very few people that still hang on to the ancient way. And this is how you can tell the difference. If somebody says anything about good versus evil, this is not the ancient way. If you go to a ceremony and people are saying, yeah, we're doing this to protect ourselves from the evil this or the evil that, this is not the ancient way. That's the Christian-influenced way. So if you want a real thing, then it's best that you get out of there because that's what you're going to experience is duality. That's why I talk about that, because it is a part of daily life. But if we learn about it, we can manage it. We can transform it into something that works. So we might add something to it or take something away from it, but we can change it. We have that power to transform duality into something that works. See, what duality really is, is incomplete. And it's made incomplete because of the way man thinks. It's man who created duality because he was scared of things he didn't understand. So therefore, he felt a need to control it. Like man's fear of the passionate power of women. Most men are afraid of that. And so they feel they have to subdue and oppress their woman by whatever means possible. And so they put her down. They call her a whore or whatever. But it's man's fear of the unknown that he has to try to control things by making up rules that are basically founded upon something like, if you don't agree with me, then you are wrong, then you are evil, so I must oppress you, I must destroy you. You see what I mean? And that's how religions are developed, and other things too. So it's incomplete because men are not responsible for themselves. So the result is duality. To read more about Lakota Star Knowledge Spirituality, you can read my book called Wichoha Otechike. You can see the book cover on the right side of this screen. This book contains the information to what I talk about on my Lakota Spirituality videos. To purchase this book, please click below where it says Show More. Clicking on that link will open up the description below. And there you will see a link called To Purchase My Books. As you will see, it's an eBay link. Click on that eBay link and there you will see the information to get this book. Lila Pilamayelo. Thank you very much.